Hello, my name is Jonathan Lai. I'm a graduate student at the University of Alberta in the Department of Human Ecology. Uh, the presentation today is on my thesis research titled, The Risks of Workplace Ageism for an Aging Labor Force. So to begin, I'd first like to define what ageism is, and it refers to the beliefs, stereotypes, and prejudices that a person has of an individual or group based on their known or perceived age. So affective is attitudinal. Um, it relates to the feelings that a person has uh, towards someone else based on their age. Behavioral, you can think of this as age discrimination. So there'll usually be a transaction between uh, a perpetrator and a victim, um, someone who's uh, discriminating against someone based on their age. And cognitive, relates to age stereotypes and what's interesting about this is that can also relate to um, the stereotypes that a person has about themselves or the beliefs that they have of their own uh, on the next slide here is i'd like to discuss the theoretical framework which it stands from for the study it stands from social identity theory and that begins with the self-recognition of the social categories that an individual occupies. So these relate to things like a person's age, uh, their sex, race, ethnicity. And one of the underlying tenets of this theory is that individuals strive for a positive self-concept and want to claim membership to groups associated with positive characteristics. So on this next slide here, I have a few pictures of myself. Um, aging across the life course and that's what makes age different than say a person's sex or race whereas people tend to stay a part of those groups over throughout their life um, as we become older we become part of different age groups so a little bit of a thought experiment here if you could have a virtual zoom meeting with your present self uh, your past self future self and you were to talk about work and the social relationships you have you know what would be maybe some of the topics that come up you know how might you talk about um, your age that you're at you know the stage of your career and how how much how might that make you feel about yourself because on the next slide here um, while well, we're looking at our workplaces. So while we might not be able to go back to the workplaces of the past, it certainly brings up um, a, an, an interesting piece in this current uh, pandemic it, is that, you know, the work that we do uh, and the work environments that, you know, we occupy can have impacts on our health. And you know, in, a, in the pandemic with COVID-19, this certainly demonstrates, you know, the physical threat to our health and well-being that can occur. But I want to focus a bit more on this next topic, and that's psychological health and safety in the workplace. So a little bit of background uh, to this document here. In 2007, the federal government of Canada established the Mental Health Commission of Canada. Uh, with the goal to address um, mental health issues in the country. And the reason for that is that mental health uh, is something that pertains to all individuals and really rather than have the provinces kind of address strategies to uh, address mental health issues, they took it to the federal level. And one of the main documents that was produced uh, in 2013 is what's called the National Health Standard. And this document looks at the psychological and psychosocial factors in the workplace that can contribute to an individual, individual's health and well-being. Uh, and one of the main principles of this viewpoint is that, you know, our workplaces can be uh, locations which actually promote our health and well-being. And one of the main concepts uh, that this uh, document highlights is that of worker engagement. So worker engagement can be thought of as an immersive, positive psychological state that an individual can experience while performing their job role. So this is often thought of workers that are demonstrating absorption in their tasks, um, they're vigorous, they're dedicated to their job. 
And overall, workers that are engaged tend to be more productive and have better overall health. On the flip side, though, there's a concern when workers become disengaged. You can think of these as individuals who are withdrawn for their job roles, they have fewer job resources, and these people um, miss time from work, they're absent, um, they, and they tend to be experienced worse health overall. So in this respect, when we think about uh, worker engagement and the, the reality that um, labor forces are becoming older, if a greater when, as a greater proportion of the labor force becomes older, you know, what implications might workplace ageism have for um, present day and future labor forces? So that's what the present study is concerned with. And the question that I am addressing is, what role does worker age play in the relationship among positive psychosocial job factors that contribute to worker engagement? And in the next slide here, I have the conceptual framework. So um, on the left-hand side, you see the main predictors of work engagement that I'll be covering in this study, which are perceived organizational support. You can think of that as managerial support, um, peer and coworker support, of course, is coworker relationships, and meaningful work. You know, does a job fill a particular purpose for the individual? And you can see these are positively related with work engagement. Whereas of course, it, experiencing or perceiving age discrimination in your workplace will have a negative effect. These are the expected signs towards work engagement. And worker age here, um, the arrows coming to the pathways here indicate uh, a moderation or interaction effect. So um, what is the inquiry then is, you know, does worker age affect the strength of these um, these pathways? Is there, is there an element of worker age that maybe makes the pathways weaker? And if so, does, um, you know, is it because older workers may experience like fewer of these supports? And so uh, the sample for this study is drawn from the General Social Survey Cycle 30, Canadians at Work and Home. Uh, the sample includes 7,906 respondents, uh, uh, roughly 3,800 who are male and close to 4,100 who are female. And within these sample, respondents were employed full or part-time and worked as part of the team at the time of the survey. So really um, looking to capture those workers who are working in organizational settings with teams and managers, um, which is important to track our perceived organizational support. So, our results. <laughs> um, the first result here is just a breakdown of the age categories of workers. So, uh, the younger group is comprised by 15 to 30, 34 year olds, and that's close to 30% of the sample. The largest group are the middle-aged workers, which are aged 35 to 54, and that's close to 50% of the overall sample. And the older category of workers are those aged 55 and older, and that's close to uh, a quarter of the sample. Uh, this next slide is the mean scores of the psychosocial factors uh, and engagement. Uh, so, uh, perceived organizational support, peer and cohort support, and youth work, these are on a scale of one to five. And you can see that across uh, the three age categories, where these scores are fairly close, not seeing very many um, um, divergence in terms of these scores. And engagement is scored on a scale of one to 10. And as you can see, um, that these overall scores are negatively skewed with many of the scores pushing towards the positive end as these are all pretty close to nine. Um, the next slide here is a frequency report of the number of workers that experienced age discrimination in the last 12 months. So as you can see, um, the middle-aged workers are appearing to experience fewer instances of age discrimination than both the younger and older cohorts. And I'd like to mention that 
um, this number of 166. That represents 2% of the sample that has experienced age discrimination in the last 12 months. But on this next slide, when we look at the uh, correlation between our factors, the first thing I want to highlight here is that age discrimination, um, while it's expected to be negative, um, relation uh, correlate negatively correlated to these factors it's not registering at a level of significance and as you can see the other uh, factors under investigation are positively correlated with each other um, and particularly with engagement uh, it appears that meaningful work is most highly correlated with engagement compared to peer and coworker support and perceived organizational support. So on this next slide, um, I have the standardized regression estimates and I'll just go over a few pieces here as I know there's quite a bit of information on this slide. So starting here at the bottom, um, these were measured using structural equation modeling techniques uh, using M plus version 8.4. So this bottom, indicates the fit indices of the model, uh, chi-square, RMCA, and SRM are, uh, are measures of overall fit of the model, and these scores are quite good. Whereas the CFI and TLI measures um, look at the more uh, local indices. So I was able to improve these um, bits by um, examining the normalized residuals. So overall this model fit is quite good. Um, with respect to the regression pathways, only the significant pathways are listed. So um, perceived and experienced age discrimination did not register in this model. Um, and this first number here is the estimate regression path for perceived organizational support on worker engagement. And you can see that it's positive, uh, somewhat weak, and in the, in the brackets here are the confidence intervals. So this is the lower 2.5% at 0 0.046 to 0 0.293, so still positive. Uh, what is a bit uh, unexpected in this one is that peer and coworker support actually registered as a negative uh, regression uh, on on worker engagement at negative 0.87. So that estimate itself is also fairly weak, and it, but it does also make it at the um, p-value of 0.05 level. Uh, meaningful work, however, a very strong um, influencer of worker engagement, an estimate of 0.5. 576 and the bootstrap constants and rails are showing uh, very very high numbers between like the lower and upper range here um, and the last piece to discuss is worker age did that moderate that worker age did not moderate um, the path the regression pathways between these three um, predictors so um, it, it, it was found that yeah, worker age did not have a significant moderating effect based on the three age categories of workers. So for discussion, uh, returning to our research question here, um, what role does worker age play in the relationship among positive psychosocial job factors that contribute to worker engagement? It doesn't seem that um, worker age is having a influence on those relationships. Um, some limitations with this study, however, is that with uh, the GSS cycle 30, it doesn't capture organizational level data. So it would be useful to um, measure um, these factors at the team level or a group level to give a better context of what might be going on in those organizational settings. And as well, um, the GSS cycle 30 doesn't have complete standardized measurements for some of the variables interest here. So for example, worker engagement um, and the other factors only had two indicators a piece. 
And ageism was just simply a question if you've experienced age discrimination in the last 12 months, yes or no. So having uh, some improved measures to capture some of these nuances would probably be useful. And in terms of uh, conclusion next steps, I, given the findings here uh, and the strength that meaningful work has on worker engagement, it's important, um, well, for workers of all ages to have, have access to meaningful work, but in the context of a pandemic, um, rising automation and uh, uh, industry transitions, you know, making sure that, you know, ageist beliefs are not uh, becoming a growing part of the workplace and influencing um, negative outcomes for older workers. Because as a larger proportion of, well, the global labor force becomes older, um, it's important that individuals have access to meaningful work. And in terms of next steps for research with this uh, data set, this model, um, you know, uh, it did provide a good overview of Canadian workers as, as a whole, but I think there is opportunity to look at the model um, based on worker sex. So maybe there's some differences based on just for the model for just males or females. And uh, the sample size, given that it's so large with this survey, there is an opportunity to just focus on some industry-based analysis. So some of the um, occupations that have good representation are business, health, sales, and services. So um, there is an opportunity to do a bit of a deeper dive into some of these uh, industries in Canada. Um, here is my reference list for some of the sources that I refer uh, referred to in my presentation. I would also like to acknowledge that support for this research has been provided by the Alberta Award for the Study of Canadian Human Rights and Multiculturalism. Uh, I'm, if you'd like to reach out with any question or comments, uh, here's my email. Uh, you're also welcome to contact me on Twitter if you prefer. Uh, I'd be happy to hear any uh, feedback that you might have. Again, my name's Jonathan Lai, um, and thank you for taking the time to watch my presentation. Have a nice day.